quite incredible what you find at night. There's just such a lot of different types of crabs in the estuary that I decided to spend a little bit of time and focus on them. The first one we came across was this bizarre troll looking crab and he was just plowing his way through the seagrass. It's quite a large crab this, probably the size of a side plate. These crabs have the most peculiar habit of putting sponges on their backs. They're also known to attach pansy shells and other living organisms and they use this for camouflage. This is another one of the sponge crabs. This particular character has picked up a beautiful pansy shell. He's obviously looking for tiny crustaceans and other small food parcels and he lunged forward. He must have come across something that he quite fancied. And then I came across a less fortunate pansy shell. This pansy shell wasn't being worn as a headdress, but was rather on the menu this evening. This is a blue swimming crab. They're very common here in the estuary and the locals do eat quite a lot of them. He dug up this live pansy shell and the pansy shell actually forms part of the sea urchin family. The whole pansy shell didn't take long to consume, probably about four minutes in total, and the entire pansy was gone. Another very odd looking creature was this little manic hermit crab. It's got these crazy little green eyes that stick out on their stalks. Curiously also, on his shell, he has two of these anemones. These anemones are obviously used to getting rough and tumbled around as all their little branches are out and they're carrying on feeding as if nothing is awry. And finally he comes across this shell. Picks it up to his mouth, tastes it, not very interested, and he drops it. On my way back across the sandy channel, we came across this really bizarre looking crab. It actually almost looked dead. It was just sitting right in the middle of the channel and not moving whatsoever. It's got very long arms and these tiny pincers. What a fascinating evening spent here in the Pomeni estuary, just looking at these strange crustaceans. morning the southeasters were howling. I went out towards the Cape Point and on my way you can just see how the clouds were whipping across the top of the Table Mountain. The penguins were just biding their time on the shore. And looking further out you can see just why. The sea conditions were really, really horrendous. They almost looked uh, disgruntled and not very happy at all with the conditions. Summer being the time for really strong southeasters and combined with the effect of the commercial fishing in this particular area, really makes things a lot tougher for these animals to survive. The trawlers are now in competition with a lot of these birds for obviously the fish that both of them 
need to survive. So it's definitely an issue that needs to be addressed very, very quickly and very, very smartly if we to see these birds survive the next 20 or 30 years. This morning I headed up the west coast. I went up about 60 kilometers and uh, I found myself on a beach in an area called Silverstrom Strand. The vegetation that I found here was very, very impressive. The plants are pretty hardy, lots of succulent plants here. And these plants have, over the years, evolved to withstand the really harsh conditions that one finds up on this west coast. A lot of thorns obviously protecting the plants from predators. And between the Feinbos and the ocean, you get this corridor of about 15 to, to 25 meters of just huge amounts of, of shells. Most of these shells are mussel shells. Most of these birds were the Cape Cormorants, but obviously there's a lot of other birds that come into this particular area. There's not much uh, chance of them being preyed upon from the shore nor from the ocean, so a very safe zone for them. It was just a really nice morning on the beach here up the west coast. Conditions here compared to Natal, very, very different. A much harsher area than what we used to up in Natal. <laughs> 